Hi everybody, it's Jessica, the Dollhouse Curator, and welcome back to the Curated Dollhouse. Today, I am here to introduce y'all to our second scene for our curated scenes for Halloween. So this scene, y'all, is the Butterfly Fairy Apothecary. Yes. So I don't know where the idea came from. I had a lot of really cute and whimsical looking items in the collection that I pulled out when I went shopping in my collection for kind of Halloween and fall decor. And this scene just kind of slowly started to come together based a little bit off of the magic school um, idea, but also kind of a little bit of pumpkin patch. And then once I threw in the butterfly idea, it just kind of took it home. So let me scoot up a little bit. So I'm gonna take y'all around and introduce y'all. So um, over here, y'all, I'm using my little fairy houses. Remember I showed y'all that in the fall decor. So they actually light up inside. I thought that was super cute um, for this. I love the little vines. And of course, as y'all see, it's got butterflies on it as well which just continued to tie to the rest of the scene. I'm using a lot of my Harry Potter potions in this one. And the thought process behind this is that this is normally y'all a candy store. Yeah, y'all know every, every scene has a theory behind it. So this is normally her candy store, but every year she does something amazingly big for Halloween. So this year she's doing a butterfly apothecary and you can come in and shop for all of your sweets which because in their world it would still be candy but all around the theme of um these would bring more butterflies and happiness into your life yeah like i said y'all every scene as an idea even if y'all don't know it so i also did a few of my favorite little timu items so let me lift this up there we go. Behind Quincy, y'all see I have um, my little drinks back there. I have my bonsai tree, which I absolutely love. Some of my Skelegro bottles. I'm using one of the new Barbie kind of farm play sets that I got this year. And then I also have my little butterfly stands over here that I'm kind of using for additional little um, shelving areas. So for the most part, y'all, this one came together really quick as far as like all of the color pattern um, and kind of what I thought it was, the idea of what I thought it was going to be. And then the final little tweaks on it um, really came through when I added the characters to it. So I told y'all in the last video that I did a couple of Jedis. So y'all saw my littles Jedi in that video. So for over here, y'all, I did my tweens. So I did one of my Creatable World dolls. He is in his Jedi outfit. He is wearing the mini fashion boots. I'm so glad I got those boots and they fit this. And when I got those, I automatically knew that I would be able to use it with this Jedi costume because I actually thought of this costume last year when I was going through stuff that I could do. So the idea for the Jedi kind of stuck with me the whole year. And when I got those boots, I was like, oh, this would be perfect and I can pull off the boots for my tweens. I also have my little shopping baskets, y'all. I went through and pulled out my shopping baskets that I bought last year from Timu, as well as the ones that we used to get in the mini brands. I thought that was really nice for this area and it gave me a way to use those. And since I was using the trip or treat buckets in the other scene, I thought this was a great way to have something in the hands of the people as they were going through to make it still kind of look trick or treat and Halloween. So next up y'all, let me shift you a little bit closer. Our next costume is over here on Mr. Quincy. I'm gonna pull him forward so you can see him. So Quincy is basically our G.I. Joe gun runner character. So I have a toy, a little um, minifigure G.I. Joe that kind of had on something similar. So when I was thinking of Halloween and y'all know Quincy is my toy collector doll and it just kind of went hand in hand. And y'all know when I was going through to pull out fall, I found that beret, I felt like that fit him. And this is the second way that we've been able to use this beret um, as part of his character, and I love it. 
So I did him in some army boots and then just some khaki pants. I got a lot of kind of military aspect stuff in that June thrift store haul that I did for the, or um, flea market haul that I did for the guys. And then I used my army Barbie medical bags to go with it. And I think this is so cute. I love that he was able to keep his beret. It just fits his personality. And I love that I was able to mix it into the costume and make it make sense. And then still be inspired by something else that kind of ties to him. Because again, that G.I. Joe is one of the many toys that I have. And that will be um, one of the things that is highlighted in Quincy's face. So y'all, my other doll up here, y'all have seen. I got a little bit lazy, y'all, and I didn't really change her outfit. So this is my love doll. Y'all know these dolls are super duper tiny comparatively. So instead of digging through trying to find a costume to make work, I just went ahead and left her as the kind of magic school student. I thought it was a good idea and an easy way to make it work for Halloween. And she is absolutely adorable. I still want to get the other two, y'all, but none of the fashion packs nor the dolls I have seen go on sale yet. So I will continue to be waiting. But yeah, I really do like those dolls. Again, they have not left the curated dollhouse since I got them. And I think the farthest the other one is because she's not in the Halloween scenes. I think she's right here by my foot on the floor because <laughs> they're not very far away. I love the size of those dolls and the articulation. So finally, y'all, there is my Brooklyn mini me. I have her on a shorty petite body now. So in the last scene, y'all know she was um, Professor Ophelia Hopkins in our Lancaster School for the Magically Gifted. And when we did our little magic school diorama. But y'all, I was trying to come up with costumes. I felt like I needed one more character. So I pulled out some stuff and I was going to do an Egyptian thing or I was trying to. So I put, I have two of these skirts that are kind of exactly the same design, but they're made a little bit different. So I was like, oh, I can use these. It'll be, you know, right. I can mix in some other stuff. But y'all, I got the skirt put on her. One is a top. And then I used the other one to go over it. And it was so adorable. It kind of gave me like a little new age Marilyn Monroe, you know, kind of like from what is it? Some like it hot or whatever the one where she's standing over the thing in the white dress. So it kind of gave me a little Maryland feel. And then y'all, I don't know where it came from. I guess all of the butterflies in the scene just jumped out and flew into my brain with intuition at once. And I went and made some butterfly wings for her. And I, my, this, y'all know I love pearls. So she already had on all of her pearls. And I went looking for something that I could use as a little, um, I'm going to say just a little extra design for the character. And I ran across, if I can get it up here, there you go. Okay, so I ran across that bracelet with the little butterfly on it. And I thought it was adorable and it all kind of fit. So she became the last character that I added to these. And she is the butterfly fairy. I have her on one of my stands that I love. So y'all, I got a lot of stands in the house. And as we have been working on storage over the past couple of weeks, I have found I have a lot more stands in the house. But I will say most of them I do not use and I understand why. I have three stands that I normally go to and these are the stands that I got with my Black Panther collection dolls with Suri, Nakia, and Okoye. These stands are really nice, y'all. I literally have her up there with no feet down, and it is um, strong enough to hold her as she's kind of sitting there looking like she's floating. I have also tried this stand um, with my Illy dolls in one of the videos that I actually don't think y'all got to see because we had to um, delete it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that video ever got to y'all because we had to delete it. And that's why y'all haven't seen anything on my Illy dolls, even though I said I was going to do it. So I'll get back around to that. But when I was doing in that video, I had my Illy dolls looking like they were dancing. So you could see the different articulation that I was doing. And the stand stood up. Seriously, y'all. Like I had the Illy dolls floating in the air in a full leap. And the stand was able to hold them. So I absolutely love these stands. 
but her outfit came out so adorable and it was the last costume that I added in. Again, just two skirts that I put together a different way, a pearl bracelet that I put on, and then I made these wings out of some fabric that I had, some of that glitter um, mesh paper that I have, and some plastic. So I cut the wings out of plastic, I put the fabric on the back, I put the glitter paper on the front so you have texture on both sides. And then um, they're, they're staying on with a paper clip. So can y'all see that? There you go. Y'all see the paper clip is kind of stuck in the back of the dress and I have it angled so it can work in our scene. And this just turned out too cute. And again, I love that stand. I can hide it back there. And she just looks like she is just floating just in the air. It is so adorable. So the last thing ever here, y'all, and I think I'm gonna have to turn my lights off for y'all to be able to see it at all. So give me a second. There you go. So I do have my colored lights still on this side as well. And I have them set to a faster kind of fade. And then my husband and I, again, working on storage, cleaning out the garage, he found uh, this thing. It's something that we have, I don't know. It's something that comes from somewhere, but we kind of liked it and never got rid of it. And I have that kind of being a little crystal ball. I like how the colors hit behind it. But y'all, this one is nice. And let me get my color set right. There we go. That's normally kind of where I keep it with just kind of that little orangey glow behind it. I think it looks so pretty. This one, y'all, again, it kind of was a hodgepodge of the stuff that I had for fall decor and a color scheme. And then at the end, figuring out the butterfly fairy costume, it was just adorable. And I, then I started to notice all of the other butterflies that were already in this space. So, yeah. So, um, I told y'all I've gotten thick, so I'm finna hush on this one. I still have another, I'm gonna do the other one in one video. I am. It's two different areas, actually it's three different areas, but I'm gonna do it in one video, y'all, because I can feel my energy <laughs> kind of fading out of me as we go. So let me get my lights back on and I'll just turn them down to a decent level. There you go. Y'all, I really like this scene. It is so cute. I love the color scheme. I love that I was able to disguise my outside um, kind of a little bit. But this one is not my favorite. I haven't picked a favorite of these. I think the costumes more is what I'm kind of hitting for favorites because some stuff kind of came together really fun, like the Jedi costumes I've had in mind since last year. But then this little butterfly fairy just came together at the last minute and it was adorable. So it just kind of added to the little fun with this one. But all right, y'all. Thank y'all for visiting the curated dollhouse and being introduced to this second curated scene for Halloween where we visited our butterfly fairy apothecary candy store. Yeah. All right, y'all. We will be back in a new video with a new concept. Bye, y'all.